And a very good morning, everybody, to the British and to 17th century historians of us. It's November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Day. For Queen's University, it's a very memorable day for entirely different reasons. My name is Daniel Wolfe, and I'm the 20th Principal and Vice Chancellor of Queen's University, and I would like to welcome everybody here today for this morning's special announcement. And it gives me great pleasure to be serving as the Master of Ceremonies. And I'd like to begin by noting that we have a number of honored and special guests who have joined us today, including past principals and university administrators and benefactors. A warm welcome to Mark Gerritsen, our Member of Parliament for Kingston and the Islands, and His Worship, Brian Patterson, Mayor of Kingston. And let me also say hello and welcome to everyone who is watching this announcement on our live stream, wherever you are, in Kingston, in Canada, the US, or around the world as part of the Queen's Diaspora. Now, before we begin with the formal program, it's my pleasure to introduce Ganashone Janice Hill, who is our inaugural Associate Vice Principal at Indigenous Initiatives and Reconciliation to deliver the words before all others and to acknowledge the lands on which Queen's sits. Thank you, Principal Wolf. Skunago sewa gwego, wat kwanu horadu, Ganu shuni yungyat, wagenyatu ni wagitarodu, nuk gundege digidro. Greetings and peace to all of you. Welcome. My name is Janice Hill. I'm a member of the Turtle Clan of the Mohawk Nation and I come from Tayendanega Mohawk Territory. I would like to take this opportunity to offer greetings and thanksgiving to creation, as is my tradition. We are instructed that prior to any business taking place, we are responsible to say the words that come before all others, or the Ohan Dugari Wadekwa. <clears throat> to acknowledge and give thanks to all of creation and all that has been provided for us. At the beginning of time, we and all of creation were given our original instructions, and we thank creation for continuing to fulfill their instructions and making it possible for us to live here today. As human beings, we've been instructed to acknowledge and give thanks that this is so and that all of the energy of creation continues. Ona sabadahun sios kunjokwa ne egadi ohandu garewadekwa, ungade wanungode, aguego unska, and idawat wait nuni, ne unguat nigura, dan o dea tinawarado, ne aguego yunki yenawase, ji o unjade. Aguego unska, and idawat wait nuni, ne unguat nigura, dan o dea tinawarado, ne aguego yunki yenawase, ji karunyade. Dona, dana o nagadi, aguego de chidwenu horado, ne sungwaya diso. Suk eto neona wagatari mun hodu. Eto neodun hage ne unguat nigura eto ni gawanage. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you to the to to welcome you to this land which Queen's University stands on. As I understand it, this land is considered to be part of the dish with one spoon wampum an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Our peoples have hunted and lived on this land since the beginning of time. Our ancient stories tell of the birth of our peacemaker just west of here and the beginning of the Iroquois Confederacy. On behalf of my ancestors, our chiefs, clan mothers, elders past and present, the warriors, men, women, and children, I welcome you to this land. 
Along with the Anishinaabe, I would also like to respectfully acknowledge the Métis people who hunted and settled this land and continue to call it home, along with the many other Indigenous peoples who now call Kingston home. Nyawakiwahi, thank you, my friends, for your patience and the opportunity to speak with you today. Dan Oni Eto. Thank you, Ganashone. Next, I'd like to introduce the chair of the Queen's Board of Trustees, Dr. Donald Raymond. Don is a prominent alumnus who has very deep tricolor roots, having earned both his Bachelor of Science and his PhD in electrical engineering here at Queen's. Since 2008, he has served on our Board of Trustees and in 2016 became its 21st chair. Don is also an internationally respected investment executive and is managing partner and chief investment officer at Alignvest Investment Management in Toronto. Don previously served as chief investment strategist for the now more than $350 billion Canada Pension Plan Investment Board and was instrumental in the development of the United Nations Principles of Responsible Investing. I'd now like to invite Don to kick off the morning with some opening remarks from the board. Don. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Wolf, and uh, good morning. It's great to see all of you here today, and uh, welcome uh, those of you on the, uh, on the live stream as well. Um, it's an appropriate time to take a look back at just how far Queens has come under your, your leadership. Uh, Principal Wolf, and at the same time, look ahead to what a promising future uh, we have here at Queen's. So Principal Wolf arrived in uh, 2009 in the shadows of the global financial crisis. And uh, this was a time when the university was uh, uh, having some severe budgetary challenges in balancing its books. And I would say under Principal Wolf's leadership, some uh, difficult decisions, the hard work of staff and faculty, uh, the generosity of our uh, donors, alumni, and friends, as well as support from all levels of government, Queen's is now on a firm financial footing, and we're reinvesting in our academic mission. Uh, from the soon-to-be-completed uh, Mitchell Hall, just down, down the street, which will house uh, state-of-the-art uh, innovation and, um, and research facilities, as well as the central hub for all student uh, health and wellness activities, uh, we've also seen the construction of two new residences, uh, a new medical sciences building, uh, a revitalized Richardson Stadium, and the absolutely spectacular Isabel Bader uh, Center for the Performing Arts. So uh, signs of momentum are indeed everywhere. And under Principal Wolf's Faculty Renewal Initiative, Queens will uh, hire 200 new faculty over a period of five years after a period of financial restraint, which did affect faculty hiring for a period of time. This initiative will strengthen and diversify our faculty complement uh, and lay the foundations for future research excellence. Full-time student enrollment is up 6,000 to 23,000 students over the last decade. International students from 94 countries now comprise about 10% of our undergraduate student population. That's up from 3% four years ago. And international students comprise about a quarter of our graduate student population. From our renewed efforts to enhance equity, diversity, and inclusivity and indigenous initiatives, initiatives to our ongoing support for all faculty, staff, and students for health and wellness, Queen's is aiming to be a welcoming campus for all. Now, it's generally quite hard to get into Queen's. We had 42,000 applicants last year for 4,500 undergraduate uh, first-year programs, but it's also a place where students thrive academically. About 90% of our students graduate, which is the highest graduation rate in the country. So what I like to say is, it's hard to get into Queens, but if you come to Queens, we'll do everything we can to help you graduate. So Principal Wolf, on behalf of the entire uh, Board of Trustees, past and present, uh, I want to extend our sincere gratitude for everything that you've done for the university over the last nine plus years, and it's not over yet, <laughs> just to re remind you. Um, You've guided us to a much better place on many fronts, and we'll have other occasions to thank you. So thank you. And this morning, however, we are pleased to be welcoming our next principal and vice chancellor, who will help us write the next chapter in Queen's long history. So thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Don. And I must say, I do think we have an awful lot to be proud of here at Queen's. And it has been an absolute pleasure and an honor to have been able to play a role and witness some of the highlights over the past decade. And as somebody who will be returning to the ranks as a faculty member, I very much look forward to seeing what the next decade will bring. I now have the pleasure of introducing our next two speakers, the Chancellor of the University, Jim Leach, and the University Rector, Alexandra De Silva. Chancellor Leach is the 14th Chancellor of Queens, and he has maintained close connections to the university since he earned his Master of Business Administration here in 1973. He has been both a member of the Queen's Board of Trustees, a university council member, and served on the campaign of the initiative, of the cabinet of the initiative campaign. In 2014, Chancellor Leach retired from his position as president and CEO of the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, one of the world's largest plans. He's also renowned for his work chairing several large charitable foundations. Joining Chancellor Leach is Alexandra De Silva, Alexandra is the university's 36th rector, and she is also a education student, a concurrent education student, majoring in English. Alexandra has served as the Reunion Street Festival Coordinator and has long worked to support mental wellness and student engagement here at Queens. Please welcome Alexandra and Jim. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Uh, I know I speak for the rector when I say we were both delighted to get the call to be part of the committee charged with recommending a principal designate to the Board of Trustees. So you get a sense of, of the procedure. The uh, Joint Board Senate Principal Search Committee was comprised of nine members of the Board of Trustees and nine members of Senate, along with support from the offices of Indigenous Initiatives and Equity and Human Rights, as well as the University Secretariat. As part of this committee's work, we also invited members of the Queen's community to share their thoughts on the principalship with us. And we heard from many people of their pride in our great university and their optimism uh, about what's going to happen next. Over the course of nine months, the committee met some great candidates for this important leadership position from organizations across the province, across Canada, and overseas. And along the way, we had many inspiring conversations about the past, the present, and the future of our alma mater. In the end, we were pleased to be able to join together and recommend a principal designate to the Board of Trustees. And I'm going to keep you in suspense because I'm now going to turn it over to Alex. Thank you, Jim. So as the rector, it is my role to represent students at the Board of Trustees, and it was my absolute honor to participate in this journey. As a student myself, I spoke about my thoughts on the many things that make Queen's University so special, from our hard-to-beat student learning experience and our incredible groundbreaking research that's happening in spaces all around us, both on campus and far beyond. As a committee, I think it's safe to say that we knew we were looking for someone who understood everything that contributes to that special so-called Queen's magic. Um, and we wanted somebody who would also bring an incredible set of experiences and expertise into this role. Someone who would help Queen's build on its strengths, uh, capitalize on its momentum, and lead the university towards an ever brighter future. And I am sure you are just as excited as we are to find out who this person is. And so with that, I am pleased to introduce to you today the Principal and Vice Chancellor Designate of Queen's University, Dr. Patrick Dean.
so as the ceremonial head of the university, and the principal always reminds me of ceremonial <laughs> head, it's my privilege uh, to be uh, one of the very first to extend a very warm welcome to you, Patrick. Uh, and before we invite uh, him to come up to the podium, uh, let me just share a few thoughts about what made him such a compelling choice for the university at this time. Dr. Dean is an experienced and incredibly well-respected executive in the post-secondary sector in Canada, and he's currently serving as the seventh president of McMaster University. In 2014, he was unanimously reappointed at McMaster for a second five-year term, and with good reason. During his time at Mac, he has helped design a more engaging student learning experience. He's enhanced collaborations with local and global communities and helped drive that university's efforts to become internationally recognized as a top research institution. And I'm pleased to say he's also a familiar face to many here at Queen's, as he was our Vice President Academic for five years before departing for McMaster back in 2010. During this time at Queen's, Dr. Dean was known for his exceptional leadership and his compelling vision. Before his time at Queen's, Dr. Dean also spent time at the University of Winnipeg, and he taught at Western and the University of Toronto where he was a professor of English and cultural studies. He has been honored with many awards for his academic work, including the first John Charles Polanyi Prize for Literature, which he received in 1988, and he received the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012. So I'm sure we'd all like to hear from Patrick himself about how he feels about the new role he will assume this coming July. It's an honor and a privilege to invite principal designate Patrick Dean to the podium. Patrick. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Jim. Don, Daniel, thank you very much. Jan, great, great to be here with you today. Um, those of you who know me from my earlier time at Queen's and the uh, intimate involvement I had in addressing the evolving Aberdeen Street party uh, will be very surprised to hear me say this phrase, homecoming is wonderful. <laughs> uh, it is, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, my my uh, five years at Queen's were absolutely wonderful. They were uh, fundamental and critical to my evolution as an educator and an, and, uh, an administrator. Um, I often think about those times as a time when I became particularly close to students and their concerns, as well as gained a, a, a much larger picture and understanding of the way these institutions work and the challenges they face. So it is actually wonderful to return and to, to be able to take up uh, the momentum that, that Daniel has generated uh, over his, his, his ten years, nine and a half years, as, as principal. And uh, I, I have to say it's been an honor to, to have Daniel as a presidential colleague. Uh, we have worked closely together at the Council of Ontario Universities, and I have the greatest respect for the work he's done. Um, when I think about Queen's, I, my mind always goes to its standing as a national institution. And by that, I mean not just an educational institution. Queen's is an important part of the fabric of our country. It has this long history of providing leaders for the nation, providing advice on policy, providing p perspectives and research that has, has helped to make this a better country over many, many decades. And when I was thinking this morning about uh, the long-term mission of the institution. In some ways, I think that has to continue to be the case. This is an influential and important institution in our country and beyond, and it will be my goal to ensure that we, we continue in that direction and build on it. Uh, during my years as Vice Principal Academic here, uh, we were engaged in discussions about the legacy of Robert Sutherland, uh, whose name is now on what used to be the Policy Studies Building. And we were thinking about Queen's as it was at the time Robert Sutherland came here as the first person of color to graduate from a Canadian university and the first person to be called to the bar in Canada, uh, first person of color to be called to the bar. 
Uh, and I was remembering what he said of Queen's, which is that at Queen's, he was always treated like a gentleman. And my mind goes back to that long history at this institution of respect for diversity, respect for uh, our, our fellow citizens, and the way in which the country has always worked to advance uh, uh, that kind of ethos for both for the institution and the nation. Uh, I was very gratified this week to hear about the two new appointments. Uh, Jan's appointment uh, as AVP uh, for Indigenous uh, Initiatives and Reconciliation uh, and the, uh, the appointment um, uh, of uh, the AVP for Equity, Inclusion and Diversity. Uh, these are excellent appointments. They prepare the university to move forward in that same direction that the, the whole Robert Sutherland experience uh, makes one associate with Queen's, and I look forward uh, to Queen's being a leader um, in um, its diverse, rich fabric of perspectives uh, and experiences. Um, it is also an astonishing institution for its record in terms of the quality of the student experience here. Um, uh, students who leave this place are bound together, it seems, forever. Um, through some kind of force that is very unusual in our country. Um, and I, I look forward to building on that. I think uh, these are very challenging times uh, for people graduating from university. The, the, the world they will enter, the labor market, the, the world of cultural change that they face is uh, challenging to say the least. And I think the institution uh, can play a very critical role in preparing uh, our students to be outstanding citizens. Um, and then the last thing I would talk about is the research standing of this university. This is a university that has made notable contributions in a number of fields, and I think about McDonald's Nobel Prize. Uh, that is the, one of the salient points of a very distinguished history of research here at Queen's. Uh, I know Daniel, in, in his uh, strategic discussions over the last several years, has spoken about this notion of the balanced academy. And I do think that is a really important uh, model to hold in mind as we think about, uh, about Queen's in the future. We want to build its research capacity. We want to increase and in enhance the student experience here. We want to connect it to the community more broadly. Um, and we must be at the, at the cutting edge in terms of the promotion of respect for difference and diversity in our country. It's a terribly exciting prospect. I couldn't be more delighted to be here. Um, it is a great honor. Uh, Daniel will have said this to you many times, to lead these institutions is a remarkable privilege for any individual. Uh, and to be coming back to Queens uh, to contribute in whatever way I can to the advancement of this great institution is going to be an inestimable pleasure and honor. So it's wonderful to be here again. Uh, thanks very much. What a day. Thank you, Patrick, for your remarks. And I might just reflect on the fact that our next principal and I have actually known each other for many years, well before either of us came to Queens or back to Queens. We, in fact, first met in the summer of 2003 in southern Alberta. I say summer, but it was, in fact, snowing. <laughs> at the Senior University Administrators course. Little did I know at the time that this genial South African who I was chatting a lot with, who was currently the acting president of the University of Winnipeg, would one, be, one day be my administrative colleague at Queen's, then my executive head colleague at COU and the U15 and Universities Canada, that he would be running another institution for which my wife Julie and I have great affection, McMaster, a place in some ways very, very similar to, to Queen's, much less that I would have the pleasure and thrill of handing off the reins of this very fast-moving and sometimes a little bit uh, 
flighty horse that I've been writing for the last nine and a half years to somebody for whom I have extraordinary respect as a scholar for his integrity as an administrator and a good friend. I will be leaving Queens in June in exceptionally good hands. So it's been an amazing day so far, and it's not over yet. It's been wonderful to see so many of you here this morning. To those of you watching via live stream, we thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing this news shared widely throughout the Queen's community and beyond. With that, I'd like to mark the end of our formal announcement.